Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Today playing e5 against e4, switching up from my usual Aliakin's defense. We'll go knight c6 in response to knight f3, and I'll play the two knights defense uh, against the Italian. Now we see a four knights Italian, where all four knights have been developed to their natural squares, and the bishop's gone to c4. So the best move here is I believe knight takes e4, although I don't play this often, but temporarily giving up the piece to then play d5, and fork the pieces. My opponent takes it, which I think is a little suboptimal. I think you're supposed to play d uh, bishop d3, and then after d4, bishop e4, uh, you can maintain the bishop pair. But here, I get the bishop pair, and a very dynamic position at that. You know, central pawn, got a knight developed. Both bishops are ready to be super active, and I can castle queenside fairly soon. So the only question is where to move my queen now. Um, Interesting idea of like queen to a5. That's kind of common in some Scandinavian lines. I think the Mises Kotroch line. But honestly, you don't really want to move your queen to block the bishops. But I'm thinking it might have to happen. Because I don't really want to leave it out here uh, for it to be harassed by my opponent. Like if I played this trying to prevent castling, we'd see d3. Have to move it again. The more times you move the queen in the opening, the less developed the rest of your pieces are going to be. So I'm going to go for, let's go queen back to d8. Just return to the home square, hold on to the c7 square. My opponent's going to now develop their uh, bishop, but without, without you know, pretty, pretty passive sort of claim to the center um, instead of playing a move like d4. So this gives me a bit of time to just get the bishops out. Now, do I want this bishop on d6 or c5? That's a really interesting question. Um, from d6, there's potentially an idea of like e4 and some discovery onto the h2 square. From c5, there's good pressure on f2, which is currently quite a weak square, but after castles, how weak will it be? I think what I do know is that I want to pin this knight though. So, because I know that already, um, I'm going to do that and I can leave this bishop to clarify itself later. We'll maintain the pin. And if they go for g4, I'd be quite surprised. Uh, they do go for g4. I mean, without a light square bishop, they're probably left with not many choices. But we'll go bishop g6 here. Um, and they are no longer going to be able to very easily castle kingside. So, I'm thinking probably I want to go for bishop d6 here. Or again, I could just pin it. You know what? We're pinning knights today. That's what I'm feeling. If we see a3, I'll go I'll, I'll go bishop a5. Because there's no way you play b4 as well. That on both sides of the board is not a maneuver that you can afford to get away with. Um, and I've got, I've got a bishop pair, so I'm just trying to make it active. Now, it remains to be seen. That's kind of interesting. I mean, you break the pin on the king, but with your queen. So this is still very much pinned. But obviously, I can't take and ruin the pawn structure here. So we probably will still see castles queenside. Now, I think in that case, I'm really tempted to castle kingside myself. That does look very dangerous with these pawns here. So I think what I'm going to do is just lift my queen. Probably to e7. Adding a bit of stability to this pawn. Uh, vacating room on d8 for the rook, whether that rook goes there voluntarily or is forcefully shunted to d8 by the process of castling queenside. Um, and I really am interested in a5 here. But that does mean that castling queenside is going to be a lot harder for me. If I did choose to do so, because this is probably a bit scary to castle under. If I castle this way, um, you know, h4 immediately, threatening this, trapping the bishop, and it kind of justifies this maneuver. So I'm thinking if I just castle queenside here, get the rook on the d-file, the queen might go to e1 here to step out of the d-file, um, but still maintain protection of this knight here, because I'm kind of threatening the move e4. Hit the knight, and the pawn can't take. Uh, neither can the knight, because they are both pinned to the queen. So the queen's in a bit of, a, a bit of an inopportune position at the moment. And... Hopefully, hopefully my opponent doesn't change that because this is going to be a very nice pawn move. If they do go for a3, probably we can just sack a bishop. Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, check. Only legal move, king b1. Hmm. 
you'd assume you'd assume it's a a reasonable idea maybe even just f6 bishop f7 could be a way to play that oh i don't know if i do c a3 am i gonna sacrifice i probably shouldn't oh. i think this is solid bishop takes b takes queen takes check king b1 I don't even really see the next move after that because the knight's always going to hold a2 and there's nothing i can really do about that so i think i'm just going to step back maintain this pin and say you know what if you go b4 here yeah if you go b4 here there's just no way that can be uh that can be solid so actually was there an interesting idea okay whatever i've missed it if there was um i'm again really tempted about this you know what? Let's go for it. I want to. I want to open up this position while the knight can't move. Um, I think it's a good time to play this and a good time to try and get this bishop a little more active, because honestly, it's staring down a bit of a dead diagonal at the moment. Um, and I could easily go f6 and transfer it to f7, but that's going to take some time. I'd rather play an explosive, breaking pawn move in the middle of the board, try and open some stuff up. If you don't take, it's going to be disastrous because I'm going to end up taking uh, and breaking all this open. So I think you kind of have to take, because otherwise the knight's going to hang um, to my pawn. And the knight doesn't really have anywhere pleasant to go, unless it apparently does. But I don't believe in that at all. I can just take it. I've got to be careful there's no discovery when my queen, my queen's held right. We take it all the, all the time, 100% of the time. Held by the bishop, held by the rook. This knight's still pinned. We're going to get rook e8 super quick if we need. This knight's in a in a nicely positioned place, holding my queen, maybe ready to jump in towards the center. I've got I'm I'm very happy with pretty much all my pieces at the moment. My king is safe. The one two tempo invested over here, I'm not feeling the uh, not feeling the presence of. And now, why would I not take this? Bang! There we go. Could have taken with rook. But I'm, I'm more interested in making sure this king can't move um, can't move away from this diagonal. Maybe, uh, actually, I really should have considered this. Because if rook takes, bishop takes, I might be good. Okay, right, it's my move, it's my move. Bishop steps back. Now, my queen is not hanging, but very much could be if, I, uh, if I'm rash. Oh. oh, no, my queen. Are you joking? Oh no, my queen. Oh, my queen. Oh, I can't believe I hung my queen. What? No. Oh, I might as well resign. I might as well resign. This is terrible. I've lost my queen. I'm, I can't. Please, please take my queen. I'm begging you to take my queen. Literally not. Wait. Okay, for those of you who haven't realized, the threat is knight to b3, checkmate. Uh, so my opponent has to play b4. What? Honestly, why, why am I not sacking a bishop with zero hesitation? Bishop takes here, here. I, I mean, I've got to sack the bishop, do you know what I mean? With, with takes... And then they take my queen. Oh, come on. This is a beautiful, beautiful position. I need to I need to be careful here. Right. This could be an absolute immortal game if I play it correctly. Bishop takes b4, takes here, takes here. I'm threatening checkmate there. I'm threatening checkmate here if the knight moves. I'm threatening check here, king here, and some discovery. Winning peace. I'm doing it. I'm almost certain my opponent will then take my queen. I think and if they do we step back with the bishop so that it doesn't hang and recapture the queen oh my god i cannot wait to analyze this oh my god oh my god oh my god nah man nah that is without a doubt the best checkmate I've ever delivered. Oh my days. Okay, here we are in the analysis. I am legitimately in shock after that beauty of a game. Uh, let's go through it. So E4 
e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, and knight c3, the four knights Italian. And then if I turn on the engine here, yeah, it says the best move here is to go uh, for knight takes e4. My opponent recaptures and then d5. And as I said, the bishop should go back and then after takes takes, they can preserve the bishop pair. Um, we also have a bishop pair, but in the way they did it, taking here, queen takes, um, and then the knight goes back. And you see, I've really got quite a nice advantage just because I've got a bishop pair in what is destined to be an open and flexible position. And oh, what a bishop pair it was. So, okay, I played an inaccuracy here just because I wasn't exactly sure where to put the queen. I don't normally play e5. I can't believe, I don't know what told me to play that, but it must have been the chess gods because that was a mate and a half. So, see d3 here. I pin the bishop, uh, rather the knight, sorry. Um, h3, bishop goes back, g4, and I step back, maintaining roughly the same evaluation. Um, the bishop comes in here, and I go for bishop b4. Is that the best move? It was. Wow, okay. I wasn't particularly sure that that would be, but the queen comes up, and um, immediately I could have played this move e4. Wow, okay. I didn't think it was as powerful as it, as it seems to be here, but if e4... And then pawn takes e4, I can play bishop takes here. And I guess after takes and takes, I've just got a really active position. And this is hanging and there's a threat of taking on here. The best move being king here. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm glad I saved it because, yeah, queen e7, not ideal. But then the castle, castle, queen side, I castle, queen side. Bishop gets kicked and I'm pretty sure I could have sacrificed it. If we did sacrifice it, yeah, pawn takes, queen takes here, king b1. Uh, queen check. The king goes back. Okay, it wants me to like repeat, but then it's looking for like e4. Yeah, this is this doesn't seem concrete. I mean, it's like one of those things where you sacrifice and then just hope something happens, um, which absolutely I've done in the past. But I went for bishop steps back. Queen e1. Not obvious that it's a blunder. The engine needs it to play. Uh, needs my opponent to play b4 because then e4 and this is awful because if they take let's just turn the engine and investigate this if they take then we can take here queen takes take here pawn takes take here the king moves take here just everything ends up falling apart and hanging because of that beautiful pressure we are exerting all over the position um with the bishop pair but they obviously go knight here we take they take and uh yeah i play bishop takes and then bishop steps back and I play one of the most beautiful moves, one of the most beautiful moves I've played in a long time, knight to d4. The point is, if they take my queen, oh dear, knight to b3, that is checkmate with just the two minor pieces. That is unbelievable and just shows the potency of this bishop. So they couldn't take my queen, which they correctly identified. But then after b4, sacking the bishop, best move, they take with the queen, I play bishop takes. And there's nothing to do here. I mean, they went here trying to get the fork because I think they missed the idea after the fork of me delivering this beautiful checkmate with the slicing bishop pair. I believe it's called Bowden's mate. Um, the knight's not even necessary in this. It's just the bishops. Uh, however, the most resilient defense would have been king b2. I could have lifted a rook. Then, okay, knight a4. And I could have taken this. The bishop recaptures. And then it wants, it wants oh, then I go here. I can just fork some pieces. Uh, and after takes, takes, and if king takes here, I can take the knight. I'd have just been completely winning. It all would have fallen apart, but we get to deliver a absolutely beautiful checkmate here. Um, and let me just remind you what I said at the start about the opening and about my opponent's slight inaccuracy in the opening. Uh, the fact that in this position, they play takes here, giving up the bishop pair. And then look what happened with the bishop pair. Wow. Wow. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed that game, I'd really appreciate a like, comment, subscribe. My channel's been getting some really big momentum recently, and I'm trying to make the most of that. Keep cranking out the good content for you guys. I'm loving to see, um, I'm loving seeing rather all of the super supportive feedback in the comments. I try and reply to all of them, uh, of course. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. What a game. Thank you for, for witnessing that game with me. Um, wow. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.